So this morning, we get to go even deeper to gratitude and appreciation. So, so far, a couple weeks into our series on grateful living, how to not just talk about gratitude once a year, once in a while, but really how to fully, more fully embody the energy, the vibration, the frequency of what it means to live with a grateful heart and mind. And so far, we've explored three principles that are highlighted in the book, Wake Up Grateful, written by Christy Nelson. And those principles we've explored are one, life itself is a gift. Two, everything is surprise. And the ordinary, is extraordinary. And so today, before we explore the fourth and fifth principle, I would like you to focus on the quote that's on the screen. And that is spoken by Lynn Twist, who is the author of The Soul of Money and does a lot of work with um, countries who are struggling, experiencing poverty. Um, and she also was a student of Father David Stendel Rost, who is a mentor of Christy Nelson, who wrote this book. So she says, what you appreciate, appreciates. I just want you to take a moment in the stillness. And what does that mean for you? What I appreciate, appreciates. And if you are on Zoom and if you'd like to share something in the chat, please do so. We will make sure that it gets spoken. And Paula. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yes, so Paula shares in the Course of Miracles. Do you want to repeat it or do you want me to repeat it? Okay. She wasn't mic'd yet, so I want to make sure you can hear. <laughs> you have to wear your sneakers next time. <laughs> Season. No. So, Paula shared that what it means to her is that. There's a lesson in the Course of Miracles that speaks of what I give, I receive, right? There's no separation. And I believe we can find that also within many faith traditions, including unity, right? Anybody else? What does that mean? Kirsten? It's worth more. Yes. So what I value, what I hold, you know, I'm, I'm in value in consciousness is valuable and it increases. Is that is that correct? Yes. Beautiful. Is there anything on Zoom in the chat? OK, so let's take a look at the word appreciate appreciate. It has four connotations, some of which has been spoken into already by the wisdom of Kirsten and Paula. So it is to be fully conscious of, aware, right? To hold in high regard, to be grateful for, and it also means to increase in value, like the value of a home can increase in, va in, in value. And in consciousness, what we hold in consciousness, it is generative, it reproduces. And so this leads us to 
The fourth principle of grateful living, and that is appreciation is generative. What you appreciate appreciates, which is what you both spoke into. And so let's look at the aspects of living into this. These are all, inter all those connotations are present in this principle and they support one another and they are all interrelated and each aspect is necessary to living fully into making appreciate something that is an action rather it being something that's passive we actually actively engage in our lives so number one about anything is being present to life being present in the moment what's what's before me if we know that life itself is a gift and everything in it even those things that make us feel uncomfortable or challenging that might be hard to recognize the gift in the moment but we get to choose again and say i'm willing right so first of all is to be present what is off what is what is offering what gift is being offered to me in the form of a person an experience something in nature my animals even an illness so on and so on what be present what is being offered recognize its value meaning having reverence and respect everything as i embrace the fullness of life some things are easy to see the value of right people are offering you kind words they're offering you assistance the sunrise the sunsets easy to see the value can we all agree not so easy to see and respect and hold the value for something as a gift when it is challenging when there's discord in a relationship or unexpected news of an unexpected expense and um, we can go on and on and on of those things that we might label of not right away noticing the gift being present to it because sometimes we want to stuff it avoid it right do a little spiritual bypass on it so instead all right in this moment i am present it is not i'm having a hard time respecting this and seeing its value i can remember this is going back years ago and you know i was wanting my first marriage to end it was not a healthy relationship and he had gone back to active drinking and even though i said that you know i'm in counseling and i really want this marriage to end a couple weeks later when he says i'm moving in with my some woman wasn't seeing that as the gift <laughs> in the moment <laughs> what <laughs> and i can remember having marianne williamson's illuminata prayer book and there was a prayer of betrayal and i would say that over and over and then suddenly something shifted there was a willingness there was a willingness to choose again and then it wasn't in that moment i saw the gifts but I did recognize them. And then tend to what you value. This is not just that feeling of appreciation, but this is where we make our appreciation a verb. Speaking words to those people, letting them know. In our homes, maybe you have a house plant. You need to tend to it, to nurture it. If you're a gardener, you must water it, give it the right nutrients. Our bodies need certain nutrients. We need to move them. And so how do we tend to 
appreciate? How do we make that more active in our lives? And we'll speak into that a little bit more. And so when we are present, living present, recognizing whatever is before us or the object before us as a gift, as an opportunity, and then we choose to tend to it, if it's not something that's pleasant, maybe I need to do the tending by forgiveness work. Maybe I offer myself as in service. And then when I am doing, being really present in consciousness with the fullness of this, it is generative. It's a ripple effect, right? Didn't we notice that as each person spoke about the gratitude, you know, the love that Deborah spoke, sharing and, and honoring me. And when each person's person spoke, spoke, Lauren spoke, didn't you feel the ripple effect of that, right? The energy, it, it got more expansive. And that's what happens in our lives. And so in um, Wake Up Grateful, Christy Nelson shares this. Appreciation brings about a shift from passively to actively engaging with life. We recognize that we have choices when it comes to orienting our attention. We can go on automatic pilot if we want to, which is easy to do. We see that we can notice and respond to the opportunities we have in each moment, not only our circumstances, and it can shape everything. Awareness makes it possible to become active practitioners in shaping our experiences, focusing and noticing and nurturing what we appreciate is a matter of agency. Appreciate is an active verb and calls us into active engagement. What we celebrate with our attention will grow and thrive, doing this in all the ways that we can, whenever we can, is an important aspect of grateful living. We can see right here in this, in this passage, all of those elements of appreciation is generative. And what we celebrate with our attention will grow and thrive, which has been spoken in many different ways. What we appreciate appreciates. What I give, I receive. And it is also reflected not only in the principles of grateful living, but within the unity teachings. Eric Butterworth shares in spiritual economics, the grateful heart draws to itself great things opportunity. And then Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity Shares, is the law of spirit that we must be that which we would draw to us. If we would draw to us love, we must be love, being loving and kind. If we would have peace and harmony in our environment, environment we must establish it, it within ourselves. So many times, you know, we have that tendency to look outside of ourselves. I'm lonely. I'd like to meet a group of friends. I'd like to meet a soulmate. And so we look out there. And so this conscious call is that I must be the very thing I desire. Our power of love is the power of attracting ourselves to that which we hold in consciousness. It has been known as what other things? That what we hold in consciousness we experience is which principle? Anybody? <laughs> yes, thoughts after their mind produce after their kind, or another way of saying that produce more of the same thoughts after their kind, yes. Beautiful. It's principle three, right? What I hold in consciousness, I am a co-creator or creator of life. What I hold in consciousness are seeds and consciousness is also the being part of it, the embodiment. 
also in thought, word, and action. So the, as I live in the spirit of gratitude, in thought, word, and in action, it is all around me. I can't help but not see it all around me. And so when we are embodying, tending to appreciation, it is love and action. Speaking these words, right, of affection, of kindness, that's one of the aspects of our principle of love. It is love in action, and love in action is transformative. Love in action, that which I am being in consciousness is transformative, which is the fifth principle, which is love is transformative. So what are some of the ways we can tend to appreciation to be that love in action, that love that is transformative, which we will go deeper into in a minute. So how could we tend to what we appreciate? Any thoughts? Yes. Yes, an email to a friend who is ill, a visit, a letter, a card. Yes, that is tending, appreciation. Anything else? Um, Lindy. Yeah. Yeah, being aware of what you value and naming it, the people who grew your food. Anybody on Zoom, you could also put it in the chat if you would like to share. So let's take a look at it. And I think we spoke into it already. And Gary Chapman has a book called The Five Languages of Love. And there, there are ways that we can tend to what we appreciate to be love in action. These two principles are like a hand and glove. So affirmative words through a letter, speaking them out loud, acts of service, serving this community, serving something else that you value, of, of um, a soup kitchen, you know. Um, there is the um, Centers for Family Services where we have done some drives for clothing at Christmas time in the last couple of years because of the pandemic, we have um, put money aside each board meeting. The board has um, tithe money. And at the end of the year, which will be coming soon, we've offered, it's come to about $1,000 the last couple of years. So, you know, tend to what we appreciate, acts of service, giving gifts, um, that could take so many different forms. It doesn't need to be something expensive. Spending quality time, right? Just being a listening, I shouldn't say just, it's powerful. Being a listening presence. We're not here to fix anybody. If we know that everybody is divine, whole, and complete, and has their answers within them, we don't need to solve the problems of the world for anyone. Although that is our nature to want to try to help, and that's what it that's kind of what we've been taught. But being a compassionate presence and holding the truth, I see you. I see what's happening. And I'm gonna to go to the deepest place within me and know the truth of you and be present, warts and all. And so going to the fifth principle, again, repeating, I got ahead of myself a moment ago, that when we are tending to what we appreciate, it is love in action. 
Love in action is transformative. And in the quest for wholeness, Robert Brummett, a Unity author, minister, writes, um, there's also the physical touch, I'm sorry, I didn't speak into. Here, it could be a hug, you might need to ask somebody, but, um, you know, just even a warm embrace, going for a massage can be very, um, very healing in a way we can tend to our bodies. All right, so in the quest for wholeness, as we look into and dive deeper into love is transformative, which is the fifth principle, Robert Brummett shares this. Love is the heart of wholeness. Love is the power that integrates, balances, and actualizes the soul. Hatred wounds and separates us Love heals and unites. Loving oneself and others is an essential part of becoming whole. And love is the natural expression of wholeness itself. And in the quest of wholeness, Robert Brummett says that wholeness is both the truth of who we are at the core of our being and we don't need to do anything about it, but because we've kind of fallen asleep to that truth, the quest of wholeness is also that journey that we undertake in awakening to that truth through our spiritual teachings, through prayer, through meditation, through practicing appreciation, so on and so on. And I'd like to share a very powerful story that shows the power of love as transformative. In both The Quest for Wholeness, written by Rama Brahmat, and in the book, Peace, Love, and Healing, written by Bernie Siegel. Bernie Siegel is a doctor that did a lot with the mind-body connection in that in healing very ill people um, about supporting them in what they were holding in consciousness and holding the truth of who they were in spite of what they were experiencing physically in their bodies. And so Evie McDonald wrote to Bernie Siegel. And in her letter, uh, so just let me back up. When she was um, in her mid-20s, she was diagnosed with ALS, which is that Lou Gehrig's disease, which pretty much is being given a death sentence. And she wrote to him and said that her neurologist said she had six months to live. And she stated that she was okay with dying, that life has become a big struggle. The pain in her body was unbearable. The way her life has become was unbearable. And so she was okay with releasing her body. But one thing she said was she had unfinished business. And that unfinished business was to experience unconditional love. And so here is an excerpt of what she wrote to Bernie Single. I began by sitting in front of my mirror. I looked with disgust at my deteriorating body. I sat in a wheelchair with acutely atrophying muscles. My arms and legs were shrinking. As I sat in my wheelchair six months from death, a single passionate desire pressed to the front of my mind. In my last months of life, I wanted to experience unconditional love. But how could I even hope to realize this goal if I couldn't accept my own body? The first step was to notice and write down how many negative thoughts I had about my body in the course of each day and how many positive ones I had. 
And when I saw the huge preponderance of negative thoughts on the paper, I was forced to confront the degree of hatred I had for my body. To counter this habitual and ingrained negativity every day, I singled out one aspect of my physical body that was acceptable to me. No matter how small, next, I'd use that item to begin the rewriting. Every negative thought would be followed by a positive affirmation statement. Each day, a different positive item or aspect of my body would be added. I couldn't pinpoint just when the shift occurred, but one day I noticed I had no negative thoughts about my body. I was totally at peace with a complete unalterable acceptance of the way my body was a bowl of jello in a wheelchair. I accepted my body. It didn't need to be any different. It could be whatever it was and wherever it was to be. My illness was a challenge and a gift. I was stimulated to examine my deepest thoughts, desires, and beliefs. The journey of self-discovery restructured my life and led me into a powerful experience of the mind-body connection. My physical body stopped deteriorating and began reversing the havoc wrecked by ALS. Physical healing did not occur because I set out to cure myself, but because my job on earth to discover unconditional love was not complete. Since then, I joyously awake each day filled with enthusiasm and gratitude as I continue to play my role in the transformation of medicine. Evie's deepest desire was not to heal, but to, to discover unconditional love. Evie shifted in consciousness from one of hatred and disdain to one of self-acceptance and of self-love. She came to accept her painful experience as a gift. And she recalls this. I no longer demanded that life be the way I wanted it and embrace life as it was. Where, my friends, in your life is life not the way you want it to be? Where is it a struggle? Where are you having a hard time accepting your humanness in the situation and loving yourself right where you are? Because if we cannot embrace our humanness and offer ourselves self-love, then we will not have that transformative experience. Now again, it was the byproduct. It was not her focus to be cured. And similarly, Christy Nelson shares in her book, Wake Up Grateful, she talks about radical hospitality. Radical hospitality means honoring the truth of all that we cannot anticipate and control and all that arises unexpected or uninvited. Commit to leave nothing out, including mystery. Greet with open arms and open hearts. Every part of life can find its place at your table, our table. Hello, heartbreak, welcome, joy. Come on in, tenderness, doubt, vulnerability. 
fully welcomed and held with compassionate love, these guests are more likely to come and go in a way that serves. That which we can appreciate, appreciates. Not only is appreciative generative, but love is transformative. This story reminds you of what? Evie's story reminds you of what? Myrtle Fillmore's story, yes, right? Loving every aspect of her body, forgiving herself for all the times that she spoke words of disdain, even tending to her world, choosing not to even speak negatively or gossip about, because it's not just hatred, right? Our power of love is not also holding with appreciation and affection. It is about unifying our thoughts, words, and actions to the highest place in consciousness, whether it's called the Christ consciousness, the I am consciousness, the consciousness of enlightenment, the Buddha consciousness, but to energize all that we have, our thoughts, words, actions, to the highest place of our being. And that is transformative, my friends. And so as we come to a close, because appreciation is generative and is a call to action, and so is love a call to action, I'm going to give you a call to action. So as you move through the week, I have these in the back that Pam will give out in just a moment after meditation. And then Bat has the PDF uh, to put in the chat book box. So here they are. How can appreciation become generative and love be transformative in my life? How could you make the home of your heart more unconditional? unconditionally hospitable what are you not welcoming into your heart it could even be yourself where does the gratefulness of your loving heart want to overflow and where could you offer your service where is your appreciation most needed right now and what do you care about that you want to help thrive a lot of conversations within unity have moved from the law of 10 percent in thriving because it's a law but living as the master teacher taught from the spirit of the law from the spirit of appreciation knowing that it was generative right and so as we appreciate and what we care about and what we want to see thrive, I give to that which what I want to see more of rather than it's a spiritual law and I have to. You see the energy difference in that? All right, so I invite you into that and let us take a deep breath in. and out and if you can put something in the chat box of one thing that maybe spoke to you resonated with you i invite you to do so before we go into meditation i'm going to do the same here if anybody would like to share anything that spoke to them as we wait for we can have the music just bring us right there in our sharing <laughs> It's all good. I appreciate the music when I want it and when I don't. <laughs> Anybody? All right. So we are appreciating the opportunity to go into the stillness. Oh, Deborah, loving a part of me that I have been resisting. Hmm. Thank you for your vulnerability, Deborah. All right. So let us take a deep breath in and out. 
and allowing our breath to be cleansing as we allow it to make sound with our exhale. So breathing in and out. <sighs> breathing in again and out. <sighs> and one more time, breathing in and out. <sighs> Allow your breath to take on a, a rhythm that feels right for you. Sensing the breath, the inflow, the outflow, the rhythm of life, the moving of life, right within your very midst. finding finding now with your awareness the pulse of your heart if it feels right I invite you to place one or both of your hands over your heart and now imagine through the power of your imagination that your breath is flowing in and out from your heart as you take deep deep slow breaths in and out from your heart and from the deepest place of your heart your spiritual heart I invite you to take these powerful words by Rumi into your conscious mind and into your spiritual heart. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some Momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome, welcome, and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably it may be clearing you out for some new delight the dark thought the shame the malice meet them oh meet them at the door inviting them in be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Sensing now that which calls for unconditional love within you. Which guest have you not welcomed? as a gift breathing in and breathing out being willing in this moment to love yourself right where you are not trying to fix yourself or anybody but being present to the whisper of the gift it wants to speak to you in the stillness. And breathing in 
through that place of acceptance. I may not know your value now, but nevertheless, I am willing. Nevertheless, I am willing to live from the highest place in consciousness, to replace judgment with kindness, disdain with gratitude, impatience with patience. Let me start by taking one small breath as I am aware fully in each and every moment with every breath that I take, knowing that it is a choice, knowing that what I appreciate appreciates and that love has the power to not only transform me, but my brothers, my sisters, my siblings. And so let me be the presence of appreciation and love. And I will seek that guidance and how to tend to it each morning, each afternoon, and perhaps each evening. And from that place of openness and surrender, I not only speak about love, I am the light of love. And so it is. Breathing in and breathing out. And if you'd like to breathe and release with sound one more time, the sound of appreciation. Breathing in and out. Ah. Again, breathing in. Ah. And one more time, breathing in and out. Ah. Sensing your body, rubbing your hands together, and if it feels right, lifting your arms to your side or above. So it is, and so it shall be. Amen. As you slow, slowly open your eyes, let us greet each other with a namaste.